Welcome everyone. We're going to be talking about the micro nanofabrication research experience and it's really all about tech students. So I'm Matthias Pleil. Um, I'm going to be sharing the stage with Jared Ashcroft, Alfonso Moraz, Sophia Barbara and O'Neill Duglin. So this has been supported by the National Science Foundation um, under two different grants, the um, Support Center for Microsystems Education and the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. So um, the SCME URE undergraduate research experience was uh, started um, with a dear colleague letter from NSF and we appreciate the National Science Foundation uh, support in this. And we're targeting a community college technician students rather than the traditional you know, engineering students and that sort of thing. So our primary partners in this project are Pasadena City College. Uh, all three students that are presenting today are from Pasadena. Um, Ivy Tech, uh, Rio Salado, and Lone Star College. So we've had over 20 community college students and educators participants this year. Um, we'll be finishing off in August with a group from um, Ivy Tech. But we're always looking for more. So the undergraduate research experience structure is all about recruiting community college technical education students. Um, we do some remote research preparation. So the students aren't just here for a week and that's it. We prepare them before they come. We have online short courses that cover a bunch of different uh, areas in microsystems technology. And the students also take an online safety course before they come to prepare them for the clean room. So we can maximize the utilization of the clean room and their time actually having hands-on experience. So we're located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, the facility is shown here and it's, a, it's called the MTTC which is Manufacturing Training and Technology Center. It was started back in the mid nineties and the clean room has been expanding and improving since then. So there's a lot of topics that the students can choose from. We have uh, fabrication process characterization topics. So th they learn how to do lithography and etching and, and whatnot. And then they can choose a topic, for example, to characterize one of those processes. Um, we do have characterization capability. We have design um, capabilities as well. Um, we talk about the different applications of microsystems technology. Um, Dr. Jackson, one of my partners and the subject matter expert in biomems here at the university, um, uh, works with the students and teaches them about microfluidics and microneedle arrays. Um, we can do flexible electronics. Uh, we have various modeling capabilities. Metrology we cover as well, which is measurement. And we also have units on micro nano and bio and DNA um, applications. So the whole point of this is the, so the students can work shoulder to shoulder with the um, professors and also with the PhD graduate students. So the first thing we do when students and faculty come for their experience in the clean room is we do what's called an art wafer. So the students design their own patterns and then we transfer the patterns onto a silicon dioxide wafer and etch it. And you can see some of the students in these photographs here, as well as some of the products of their um, art wafers. And then after they get oriented with the basics of etching and um, photolithography, we go on and do a more complex system, the pressure sensor. So this, this is an actual working pressure sensor um, that the students make um, in the clean room. It incorporates lithography, wet and dry etching, um, deposition, sputtering, and whatnot. So you can see in these images here, the students actually operating the equipment and making their own wafers. We have a bunch of different tools. So our deposition tools include sputter, um, deposition, perylene, which is a biocompatible material, and also oxide deposition in our furnaces. 
We have a nice suite of uh, lithography tools so we can code, expose, develop. And of course we have to spin, rinse, dry everything when we're done to get the chemicals off the wafers. So the students learn about this basic process. And this is essentially the same thing they do to make semiconductor computer chips. And here are some examples of some of our etching tools. So we have a reactive ion etching in the lower left. And then on the right side is our deep reactive ion etching tool. And you can see the results of the deep reactive ion etching in the upper left. And that's using the Bosch process. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Jared Ashcroft and he'll continue with the talk. Hi. Thanks, Matt. Um, so I'm Jared Ashcroft, the PI for the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. And as part of our center, we have created the Micro Nanotechnology Collaborative Undergraduate Research Network. Uh, this is taking the University of New Mexico model and in increasing the number of community colleges involved, increasing the number of four-year universities involved, and adding in evaluations uh, using the Evaluate UR. Um, program and CAS, who works with accessibility, is going to be adding in a STEM folio where students can finish challenges in this portal and then get badges that they can share with industry or four-year universities when transfer in order to build their resume. Um, so these are all of our different partners currently in the undergraduate research experience, but we are going to open up um, to students that are not within the network in years two and three of the program. So really our big benefit here is we're trying to give students unique projects. Let's find some undergraduate research experience projects that students can do that are unique and applicable to technical education um, with an emphasis on micro nanotechnology. Uh, just two examples that we've been doing at Pasadena City College is the blue morpho butterfly wings and its applications in um, sensors in medicine, uh, or we do a data classroom statistic analysis education modules on how can we better teach statistical analysis and thinking in uh, chemistry classrooms and in technician education. So a big focus on our program is getting students outcomes. Um, with community college students, a lot of times getting outcomes in early in their education is gonna really increase their engagement and it's gonna increase their chance of success. Um, some outcomes and examples that, that we can do is we can have students in our program compete in the Community College Innovation Challenge that the American Association of Community Colleges puts on. Um, so that's a picture of, of the Pasadena City College Nano Bio MAB team that uh, won the challenge this year. Um, we can have students apply for posters on the hill. So I've had two students apply to posters on the hill the last four years, like Vanessa Wolf in the picture on the right is meeting uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Um, so having a chance to go and present your research uh, in Washington, D.C. and have um, senators and House of Representatives, Congress people come in and, and see your work is really cool. Um, and then have students apply for scholarships um, and just programs like the Barry Goldwater Scholarship, which one of our students uh, won in the last year. You know, so the idea is get students to present, get students to get outcomes early in their education, increase success, increase engagement, um, leading to either transfer, or in this case, what we're trying to do is get students to use this undergraduate research as a um, platform into the technical education uh, pathway and eventual industry workforce. So really the model of our program is you'd have a 10 month remote research experience where the entire team that's in the, um, the network would meet once a week and just have industry come and talk, have technicians that have working in industry come and share their experiences, have the students share what research they're working with each other. The second component of that is having the students working at their community college in lab with a community college faculty mentor. Have them apply to conferences, have them apply to um, present uh, across the country, like in, for example, at Minty SIG or at high tech. Um, at the end of that first 10 months, we have funding to send all of the students to a 
two to three week capstone experience uh, in the summer. So like for instance, they could go Princeton University and work in their clean room or the University of New Mexico experience and work in that clean room. Um, or you could go to University of California Riverside and work in a nanomaterials synthesis lab um, or California State University Northridge and work in a laser lab. Um, so we have multiple kind of pathways of students that can enter research experiences. We also have three with Purdue University, University of Illinois, and University of Indiana um, that are remote experiences that are gonna be like coding and making simulations. So you could not travel if you don't want to, or if you don't have the ability to go to a school away from your campus, you could still participate in the undergraduate research experience from home, um, being a part of that of that program. And the, and the last one is Louisiana Tech University going to, to their clean room and working. Um, a big part of this is getting industry engagement, uh, getting the industry to come to the meetings and share opportunities and how to get involved in their companies and you know, just what do technicians do uh, at, in their work? Um, and kind of the last part is make sure that we're having fun, you know, that we're going to have an, a network where students are going to be able to talk to one another, um, experience science together, experience technical education together, increasing engagement, and just having better outcomes together. And with that, we're going to hear from our three awesome students. So I think first up will be Sophia Barber. Hi, my name is Sophia Barber. I'm a molecular and cell biology major at Pasadena City College. I'm going to be transferring to University of California, San Diego next fall and then changing my major to neurobiology. I'm a biochem and physics tutor. During my time at PCC, I was the external vice president of the Pi Club, as well as the vice president event coordinator and ICC representative for the Caduceus Club, an active member in the Alpha Gamma Sigma Honor Society. I'm currently at University of North Dakota for a summer internship studying neurogenesis and cognitive function. And ultimately, I hope to become a physician scientist studying preventive measures for Alzheimer's disease and treatments for Charcot Marie Tooth disease type 2K. So the, the three projects I've uh, been involved in is the hybrid bio nanoparticle conjugation for cancer therapies project. We're working on conjugating a hybrid gold silver nanoparticle to create a bio nanoparticle conjugate for use in cancer therapy. I've also been involved in the student engagement and statistical analysis data classroom Python project where we're creating statistical analysis learning modules, utilizing data classroom Excel and Python, which are, have been proven to increase student engagement, computational thinking and, stati and statistical analysis skills. And finally, I was also involved in the analysis of remote research during COVID-19 project, where a team of undergraduate students were recruited, divided between various projects, and then surveyed over several months to determine both interest in remote research opportunities and the best practices in remote undergraduate research. So I also had the uh, wonderful opportunity to go to University of New Mexico to work in the clean room. I was able to uh, learn several techniques, including how to etch the silicon dioxide coated wafer via photoresist deposition exposure and development, um, art wafer process. I was also be able to, I was also able to develop a overview of men's micromachining, including the differences between surface micromachining, bulk micromachining, and LIGA, differences between wet etch and dry etching methods, and techniques in bulk micromachining, uh, differences in anisotropic and isotropic profiles, and that's just scratching the surface. So through uh, participating in these programs, I've had so many uh, valuable outcomes. I was able to present at the MNT SIG 2020 Live Virtual Conference, the NSA ATEPI Conference, the 21st Annual UCI Community College Honors Research Project, NCUR 2021, ACS Spring 2021, Posted on the Hill 2021. I was able to, my team and I were able to be published in Frontiers in Educational Technology. Our conference paper was accepted for the 2021 American Society of Engineering Education Annual Conference and Exposition. And this, this program also allowed me to develop a love of research, um, become a 2021 Goldwater Scholar, and uh, work with the team that uh, won the Innovation Challenge. Hi, my name is Oni Duglin, and I'm a freshman at Pasadena City College, and I'm currently studying um, engineering and technology. And I'm going to transfer to UCLA to complete my bachelor degree in computer science. Um, for me, I'm enthusiastic about learning new disciplines, especially when it relates to computer science. 
I'm eager to share information and help others. I, I also like outdoor activities, hiking, climbing, swimming, and jogging. Fun fact, I like anything that has pineapple or strawberries or coconut. Um, this summer, I was able to take the opportunity to go to the University of New Mexico Manufacturer Technology Training Center. Um, there I was in a workshop which talks us about um, men's fabrication and pressure sensors. It was a hands-on workshop and we had created pressure sensors in a cleaning room. Um, before we got there, we had a, we had a those strict safety procedures. So we needed to be um, certified by MTTC to allow us to enter the, the clean room. So we had to do a prepare for some exam and know how to uh, interact with the different equipment and chemicals in the clean room. And there in the clean room, we did some recipes to follow for the desired outcome we had for making a pressure sensors require several steps, applying chemicals, temperature changes, masking, etching, in silicon and, and, and set times for each step to have the final outcome. The pressure sensor can be used in, in various ways. You can use it for in automotive, you can use it in medical, you can use it in aviation and et cetera. Also in the summer was in New Mexico, there was opportunity where, um, where we met professionals, graduates, research, researcher in micro, electronic micromechanic systems and entrepreneur manufacturing and seven men. For, for one, we was able to tour the HD micro and manufacture of men's and saw their complete fabrication and testing of men's. The MTTC workshop highlighting the possibilities in the industry. They did it for personnel to fabricate the men's, maintain the, the screen room and our equipment. The qualification to work in a clean room vary based on the roles from certification to undergrad to grad. And for the future, next year, the MTTC will be including a research to develop new men recipes. And I, for me, I will be returning to take part in the opportunity to do some research in their clean room. Um, and from this experience, it incur I'm encouraged now to research and study nanotechnology as it's becoming ubiquitous. Thank you, Anil. Hello, everybody. My name is Alfonso Moraz. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Um, I've gone, been going to Pasadena City College to study mathematics and computer science. I'm going to Boston University this fall to study electrical and computer engineering. Uh, some, some of my hobbies include lifting weights, rock climbing, and hiking, being outdoors. And then my overall career aspiration is to one day become a venture capitalist and ultimately a private equity fund manager. So this internship opportunity gave me um, many benefits uh, from that. Uh, one benefit was uh, having the opportunity to gain experience working in a clean room, uh, fabricating sensors on silicon wafers, as well as working with uh, biomems and the professors for the um, kind of understanding like micro needles. And then another opportunity they'll provide it was being able to meet with industry professionals and to kind of learn their, about their perspective of the, the MEMS market and kind of the players and um, the overall market as a general. And then having the opportunity to work alongside the New Mexico PhD st engineering students to kind of learn from their experience, to kind of ask them questions and to get advice on, on the future. So some of the outcomes from the um, opportunity given was being able to learn the different fabrication methods for MEMS uh, in terms of the processes, as well as the different types of MEMS. Um, and then I was able to develop a kind of like a mental model uh, mapping the entire industry of the MEMS from talking to the professionals, to talking to academics and students alike, and was able to build relationships and friendships with people that I will carry throughout my lifetime. Um, and also having was 
because of the experience, uh, I would say that it really influenced my trajectory in my engineering education in terms of what classes that I plan on taking in Boston and, and what things I want to study in order to kind of understand MEMS more. And ultimately, yeah, I had fun uh, kind of exploring New Mexico and Albuquerque and the city because I've never been there before. So it was pretty cool. For the future, because I'm very focused on kind of like going into like investments and, and kind of um, different kind of finance uh, business ideas, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in kind of uh, understanding the like the, like the market opportunities with sensors and kind of applying them to consumer consumer products. Uh, maybe one day in the future, because of my engineering education, uh, be, be uh, teaming up with some with people to start up a company that specializes in a, in a certain niche market for uh, sensors. Uh, and then again, kind of applying this knowledge of MEMS and the industry overall to future investment opportunities. And ultimately, I do want to graduate with a master's in electrical and computer engineering. And thank you. Well, thank you. Um, uh, we've had uh, we have excellent presentations from all of our students. Let's give them a virtual applause. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge a few folks that helped me. Um, do this whole process. And that's Dr. Nathan Jackson. He's a buddy of mine. He's um, now at the University of New Mexico. He's a professor of mechanical engineering. Um, and he's an expert in biomems and MEMS in general. Um, his degrees are in biomedical engineering. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Todd Christensen. I've known Todd for a couple of decades now, and he's the HT Micro Chief Technology Officer. And really wonderful man. He supports the Mintech group and the SCME group. Um, and it's great working with him. And he has a really good insight as to where the future is going in micro electromechanical systems. And um, the, the students, uh, the PhD students I have the pleasure of working with are outstanding. Um, they're very patient. They're great with the students. And they're, they're doing a really good job learning how to teach as well as being able to um, give advice to the students from their perspective if they go through the academic route. So I'd like to thank Pallavi Sharma and uh, Rocio Vasquez, um, two excellent students. Um, they're doing a great job here at UNM. So I'd like to thank everyone for um, this opportunity, um, especially the National Science Foundation uh, you can reach out to me at mplyle at unm.edu if you're interested in the URE program. We do also do professional development for faculty. We give stipends and we pay for all the clean room fees. So it's at no cost to you other than your valuable time. And also I'd like to thank uh, the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center um, that Jared Ashcroft is the PI of and he's done an excellent job. I love working with Jared. So we're having a lot of fun doing these uh, student projects. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much.